Hi, I'm Paul Kilgan from GK Tuition. And in this video, I want to go through Leave Insert Higher Level Exam question. The one I've chosen to go through is 2016 Paper 1, Question 8, Part A. In Part A of this question, we're told that Sierra throws a basketball and that the flight of the basketball can be described by this function. So first of all, you should recognize it's a minus x squared. They've given me the general shape of this is the flight of the, flight of the ball. You should know that a minus x squared will always be an n shape. Now in the first part of this question, we're asked to find the maximum height reached by the center of the ball. Well, straight away, you should recognize that to find the maximum height to the maximum point, what you want to do is you want to get the first derivative. So to find our maximum height, that means the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our first derivative. So I want to find f dash x. So to get the derivative of the first term here, I bring the power in front, so it's 2 multiplied by minus 0 0.274, which gives me minus 0 0.548. And I decrease the power of x by 1, so it becomes x to the power of 1. My second term is 1.193x to the power of 1, so I bring the power in front, and the derivative is just 1.193. The power of x decreases by 1, so the x is gone. So my first derivative is this. Now the reason we've got the first derivative is because the first derivative represents the slope. And I can use the slope to identify the point at which a graph turns, or a turning point on a graph. If you imagine the slope anywhere along here, as the graph increases, the slope is positive. Anywhere along here, the slope is positive. If you, after the maximum point, anywhere along here, the slope is negative. So if it's positive up to this point and it's negative, up to this, uh, negative after this point, that means that in the middle or at a turning point, the slope of any graph must be zero. So now that I've worked out the slope, in order to identify where the maximum height might be, I need to let this equal to zero. I let my slope equal to zero. So I can now say that zero is equal to minus 0 0.548x plus 1.193. So to get x on its own, I want to add, minus, I want to add 0 0.548x to both sides. If I do that, my left-hand side becomes 0 0.548x, and my right-hand side is 1.193. So to get my value of x now, I just divide both sides by 0 0.548, and if I do that, I work out my x value is 2.177. So my x value is 2.177. But I was asked to find the maximum height. X doesn't represent the height. In your graph, what represents the height is the y. So I need to find the corresponding y value. So I want to know what is the value of y when x is 2.177. So in order to do that, I want to sub back into my original function. Except everywhere there's an x, I'm going to sub in 2.177. And if I do that, that will allow me to work out the maximum height. So in this case, I can say that y is equal to minus 0 0.274 times 2.177 to be squared. My next term will be just 1.193 times 2.177. And then my final term just stays the same. It's plus 3.23. If I plug all of that into my calculator, correct to three decimal places, we work out that the maximum height reached by the ball is 4.529 meters. So that's a very typical differentiation question. So make sure you understand the theory. I want to identify where a maximum point exists on this graph. So in order to do that, I get my first derivative, or in other words, my slope, and I let my slope equal to zero. Because I know when the slope is zero, there must be a turning point. Once I've identified, so once I let my slope equal to zero, I identify that the slope of this graph is zero when x is 2.177. So I know a uh, turning point exists when x is 2.177. But the question asked me to find the maximum height. So to, I want to find the corresponding y value for when x is this. So I just sub that into my original function. And I get the maximum, the maximum number reached by my f of x, or the maximum height reached by the ball, is 4.529 meters. For a part 2 of this question, we're asked to find the acute angle to the horizontal with which the ball enters the basket. So you'll notice that on my diagram here, I've drawn that in. 
So I've drawn a horizontal line that goes through my coordinate B, where the coordinate B is where the basketball hoop is. And the acute angle with which the ball enters the basket is labeled as theta. Now you should recognize that this is, again, this is a differentiation question. In the first part of the question, I worked out that the first derivative was this. Okay, and I said that the first derivative is the slope. Remember that one of the ways of getting your slope is the rise over the run. It's the rise over the run. Okay, so to get the slope of a graph, I can often use the rise over the run. So if I was, imagine if I was to get the slope of this bit, it would be the rise over the run. Now remember to get tan, tan is the opposite over the adjacent. So imagine if I had a little right angle triangle here, it would be the opposite over the adjacent. So the tan of theta is the opposite over the adjacent, and the slope of the graph is the rise over the run. So the slope of this graph and the tan of theta is the same thing. So when I differentiate, I'm not only getting the slope, I'm also getting the tan of theta, where theta is the angle with which the curve, the angle that the curve makes with the horizontal line. So I can actually say that the tan of theta is my first derivative. So that the tan of theta is minus 0 0.548x plus 1.193. Now I want to find theta at this coordinate. So at this coordinate, I know that x is 4.5. So I want to find the tan of theta when x is 4.5. So that just means now I'm going to sub in. So I can say that the tan of theta is equal to minus 0 0.548. And instead of x, I'm going to put in 4.5. And then it's just plus 1.193, which means that the tan of theta, if I plug all of that into my calculator, I'm going to get minus 1.273. Now I'm looking for the acute angle, so that means in the acute angle means it's between 0 and 90 degrees. So if it's between 0 and 90 degrees, I know that it's in the first quadrant of my unit circle. In the first quadrant of my unit circle, tan is positive. So I'm actually looking for the tan of theta when it's plus 1.273. And now to get my theta, it's relatively straightforward. I'm just going to say that theta is tan inverse of 1.273. And if I get my theta to the nearest degree, my theta works out as 52 degrees. So just that's an important bit of theory. When you differentiate, you're not only getting the slope, but you're also getting the tan of the angle that the function makes with the horizontal line. Okay, A part three of this question, the maths to it is incredibly straightforward. However, it's hard to wrap your head around it. I know the first time I seen this, I just couldn't wrap my head around it at all. So I wanna to talk to you about the graph. In, for the first two parts of the question, I was dealing with f of x, where Sarah throws the ball from here and it lands in the basket. Now Sarah's thrown, made another shot, but now she's throwing the ball from here and it lands in the basket. Now I'm told that the gra graph of g of x is identical to the graph of f of x, that the graph of g of x is the image of the graph of f of x. But from your diagram, it doesn't look the same because how did I get from a to the basket and then get from c to the basket? The graphs are the exact same. How are they both reaching the same way? Just I think to wrap your head around this, just imagine what would happen with your g of x if you continued it on. Okay, the, from A to the basket and from C to here is identical. But you have to recognize in the diagram you've been given, the distance from C to the basket is shorter than the distance from A to the basket. So if you imagine you just continue your g of x on, then clearly f of x and g of x are identical. I think that just allows you to wrap your head around it a little bit more. But even without wrapping your head around it, they pretty much told you what to do. They told you to, that, that this is a translation, that the distance from A to C is the same as the distance from the maximum of f of x to the maximum of g of x. So all I need to do is, what is the distance from A to C, and then get the same distance from the maximum of f of x to the maximum of g of x. So I've set up a translation here. I know that the coordinate A is minus 0 0.5, 2.565 and the coordinate c is 0 2 so i just need to ask myself what did i do to my x coordinate what did i do to my y coordinate so in my x coordinates i've clearly added on 0 0.5 
and in my y coordinates I've subtracted 0 0.565. So that allows me to go from A to C. And I want to do the exact same thing to go from the top of f of x to the top of g of x. So I take my maximum point of f of x, I'm going to add 0 0.5 to my x, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.565 from my y. So 2.177 plus 0 0.5 gives me 2.677. 4.529 minus 0.565 gives me 3.964. So I just had to do a very straightforward translation there. The maths again was quite simple, but I think it is hard to wrap your head around the graph because it just it looks like it's wrong. But if you continue on your g of x, I think it makes a bit more sense. Okay, for A part 4 of this question, it says, hence or otherwise, find the equation of the parabola g of x. Now, there's loads of different ways of doing this question, so I'll talk to you about a couple of other alternatives at the end. The way that I want to do it is what they imply by hence. So in the previous part of the question, I worked out that the maximum height of g of x, the maximum point of g of x was 2.677, 3.964. We can use this information and what we know about vertex form of a quadratic equation in order to come up with the equation of the parabola. Now, if you're not comfortable with vertex form or getting a perfect square for a quadratic, I'd advise you to watch my video on 2017 paper one, question one, before you watch this one, okay? Any quadratic equation can be written in this form. A times x plus h to be squared plus k, where the maximum point of this quadratic would be minus h k. So in other words, whatever the y coordinate is of my maximum just goes here. In this case, I know that that's 3.964. So my k is 3.964. And whatever the x, x value was, I changed the sign and I put it in there. So in this case, my h, I'm going to put in minus 2.677. So because I know the maximum, I straight away know what my h and my k are. So let's sub in for g of x. For the moment, I don't know what a is. But I know that x plus h is going to be x minus 2.677 to be squared. And then instead of a k, I'm going to put in 3.964. So because I know the maximum of my quadratic, then all of a sudden, I nearly know everything that I need to know about the equation. All I need to do now is find the value of a. So to find the value of a, I just need to sub in a coordinate. Now, I could sub in this coordinate, but the x and the y value are kind of awkward. So I'm going to sub in the other coordinate that I know. I know the coordinate 0, 2 is on the graph g of x. So it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to sub in x is 0 and y is 2 than it would have been to sub in this coordinate. If I sub in this coordinate into here, I'll be able to find the value of my a. So instead of g of x, I'm going to sub in a 2. 2 is equal to a times 0 minus 2.677 to be squared plus 3.964. So that means that 2 is equal to a. Now if I get minus 2.677 and I square it, I'm going to get 7.166 plus 3.964. So what I want to do now is subtract 3.964 from both sides. And if I do that, I'll get minus 1.964 is equal to 7.166a. So clearly in this case, to get a on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by 7.166. And if I do that, my a works out as minus 0 0.274. So once I have my a, I know my h and I know my k, I can now rewrite my, uh, my g of x in the form of a times x plus h to be squared plus k. So my final answer here, if I sub in, I'm going to sub in g of x, and instead of an a, I can sub in minus 0 0.274, and x plus h will be x minus 2.677 to be squared plus 3.964. So that's my final answer. That's my parabola in vertex form. Okay, so I hope this video made sense. Um, if there's anything you're unsure of, or there's anything that I, wasn't clear, that I wasn't clear about, then just let me know in class or send me an email during the week and I'll try and explain it differently.